top of IOTA terminology, I'm not doing that, of course, just to summarize that according to the consensus, we want not to call any longer ovarian masses as complex masses, because each of them has to be described in details for morphology, vascularization, and so on. Okay, the main classification is based on morphology. So we have these categories, and uh, uh, we know that uh, an expert, an experienced ultrasound examiner can reach uh, high sensitivity, high specificity. Okay, we know that, but we want to have some objective tool in our hands to, to offer to our colleagues and so on. So what are these objective rules? Um, first, we found uh, these um, risk factors, and according to these, uh, we developed LR1, LR2. Okay, we know that. One very simple tool that I suggested to keep in mind, uh, it was very useful for me, just to know the prevalence of malignance, malignancy for each category. So if I tell you there is one papillary projection, one papillary projection, what is the prevalence of malignancy? What is the prevalence of malignancy? One in three. Just, uh, it's a number. It's something objective. It's not sufficient because it uh, can be low risk, high risk, I don't know. But around one to three. Okay, this is one tool. Then we are easy descriptors. Easy descriptors, uh, uh, you perhaps, uh, you talk about that uh, yesterday. I want just to use them with you. The four descriptors are very useful to make an instant diagnosis in front of a unilocular cyst. Not only to say benign, you can make also a specific diagnosis, an instant diagnosis. Let's try together. Here we are. The lady is 28. We can recognize the ovary. We can recognize the fluid inside. We can apply one benign descriptors. Do you agree? Yes. The first one. Because we have a premenopausa, unilocular with ground glass, not only benign, but also the diagnosis, endometrioma. What about this one? Again, premenopausa, the typical aspects of uh, acoustic shadows, cogenicity, specific diagnosis, dermoid. Then, in the presence of a unilocular anechoic tumor with the regular um, margins and with the largest diameter less than 10 centimeter, not only benign, perhaps it's a cystadenoma. Okay. The first one is a little bit uh, tricky, not very clear, because uh, it uh, quotes remaining unilocular tumor with regular walls. As you can see, there isn't a specific diagnosis, only benign. And uh, this one, what is it? Of course, a corpus luteum. So, according to IOTA, it shouldn't be among ovarian masses, because uh, in IOTA, an ovarian mass is a persistent ovarian mass, not a function, but in here. Let's move on. The last two uh, are malignant descriptors in the presence of uh, postmenopausal patients, CA125 elevated, malignant tumor, and the last one, ascites uh, postmenopausal patient elevated CA125. Okay. Easy descriptors, but what about the diagnosis when we detect papillary projections? We cannot use easy descriptors. And what about multilocular tumors? In these situations, we can try to apply simple rules. First of all, what about the prevalence of malignancy in those two? Unilocular solid tumor, 33%. Okay, let's start from this figure. But we have to differentiate. Is it possible to differentiate benign the first one, malignant the other one? What about a multilocular tumor? What is the prevalence of malignancy? Remember? I don't see. Perhaps a tumor. They are a little bit too much relaxed. Uh, this audience are not uh, so active. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. So the prevalence of malignancy is 10 percent. 10 percent. Is it possible to differentiate on the basis of what?
This is benign and this is malignant. This is our task. We know the general prevalence, but we want to differentiate. Simple rules can help in doing that. Let's try together. Okay, the first one. Um, I, I need a volunteer. Daniela, where is the microphone? Okay. Okay, volunteer. Shabs. <laughs> Shabs in the back, lady at the back. There we go, at the back, who's looking like, I can't stand you, Tom Bourne. I can't believe you asked. Uh, keep going, keep going. They right. are very, very simple. Okay. There you go. What do Life. you think? Very good. Can you see the image? Uh, yes. How do you define it? Uh, morphology. Yep, so it's unilocular, it's, it needs to be measured, but if it's more than three uh, millimetres from okay. the inner wall, then it's, it's a papillation. larger, it's higher than three millimetres, so yep. it's a unilocular solid. Yep. Very quickly, I go on. So, the prevalence of malignancy again, 33, 37%, yep. but now let's try to apply. Is it, uh, the first one, is it a unilocular? How many? Yep. How many? Dirk, you, can you repeat your lecture? <laughs> no, this is the trick. We, we cannot. Because in Italy, whenever I present a simple rules, they say unilocular, yes. There is one locule, but the morphology is not a unilocular. It's a unilocular solid. So you don't have to think the first one. It's a shame, Dirk, and you've just lectured for that long that you don't get the unilocular bit solid bit right. <laughs> shame on me, yes. Yeah, it's not good. Never okay, mind. what about the second one? Presence of solid component uh, with largest diameter less than seven minutes? Yes. Okay, acoustic shadow? No. Uh, smooth multilocular? No. Uh, color score one? Yes, yes, only one artifact, but okay, perhaps also this one, so we know, we can say with confidence that it's benign. The other one, Dirk, I want to know if you can apply simple rules. So, well, would you like to try? It's not unilocular. Uh, the presence of the solid component is certainly more than seven millimeters, so we cannot apply mm -hmm. it. Acoustic shadows, here you can argue about it. Uh, Initially, if we collected a Yota database, we would say no acoustic shadows. Now, with mm -hmm. hindsight, you might say there's two very small acoustic shadows, but no. really, it's not uh, really no, there. No acoustic shadow. It's not smooth <laughs> multilocular. <laughs> and the color score What's is certainly color more score? than one. I would say color score three. Okay. It's not four, but uh, it's two means that you really have to look very hard to find any flower. Here it's quite prominent, uh, it's even in the wall and in the populations you see it, so it's color score three, so we, it's not yeah. a simple rule. Yeah. And uh, there's uh, I'm very sorry, you can't have the lecture again. Uh, <laughs> okay. More than four populations. So, so, so more uh, yes. than four populations. So yes. we can apply only this one, but with confidence we can say malignant. Yes. The last one, because Tom is uh, pushing. Running. Yes, he's pushing. <laughs> now, let's look at this one. We have uh, the first one at, f at least uh, four papillary structures. Uh, then we can measure this one, and we have six millimeter. So we have all also the second benign. So whenever we have one malignant and one benign, we cannot apply the rules. So not applicable. We have to refer this patient or doing something else. Uh, what about this one? Unilocular solid. According to the subjective evaluation, immediately we say this is benign. Antonio, what's the height of the population? Sorry? Or what's the uh, height? The height, uh, four millimeters. Okay, so it's a population. It's a population, unilocular solid, again. We cannot apply the easy descriptors, we can apply these simple rules. So they can be really helpful for papillary projections. I think we can stop here. Pay attention to this one four millimeters again. Here, the acoustic shadows is quite evident. So we can put the first one, solid component less than seven millimeter, and acoustic shadow. Then we can check color score. I wanted to emphasize on, on only this one. For a color score, whenever we have a color score one, yes, we can click there. When we have a color score four, there. When we have a color score three, what do we have to do, Dirk? We don't uh, click, 
any uh, no, any boxer. anywhere. So you can only click if it's color score one or four. But if it's two or three, you cannot use the color score. And this is the example. So more than four papillary projection, and we don't click that one, but we don't click other this one. So we can apply the simple rules. It's malignant. Okay. Okay, that's it. That's the revision course. You have to tell me. It's okay. okay yes, I will tell you. Yes. Okay.